Okay, so continuing with our second part in the uh, database question, it says over here, Brogan wants a list of customers that have booked certain services, okay? The list must include the customers who have booked catering and venue decoration, show only the fields in this order, customer ID, party type, and party data. It should also be in ascending order of party date. So we are supposed to create a query on the party table to find the information, okay? So let's go into our database. Let's come to create. Let's come to query design. And the question paper clearly told us to use the party table. So we double click and take the party table. Now, what are the fields that uh, we are supposed to display? We are supposed to display customer ID, party type, party date. Customer ID, party type, party date. Okay, that's what they were to, that, that, that's what they told us to display. Now, if you look at the sorting, sorting has to be in ascending order of party date. Ascending order of party date. Okay, so we come to the sorting row of party date and we say it has to be sorry, ascending and make sure we show it. Okay. Now, the first criteria was include the customers who have booked catering. So we will be taking catering, but we will not be showing it. So now how do we define customers who have taken catering? What's the criteria for it? So let's go into the party table and check it. So in the party table, you can see if somebody has taken catering, it is a tick, which means yes, or which means true, okay? If they haven't taken it, it means no or false, okay? So the same applies for venue decoration as well. It's a binary value. It's true or false, yes or no, okay? It's one or zero, okay? So let's take uh, catering and our criteria is either going to be yes or our criteria is going to be true or our criteria is going to be one. You can choose any one of them, okay? So I'm going to go with yes. I'm going to say catering yes and then venue decoration also has to be yes okay so i want custom this also i'm not supposed to show i'm not supposed to show venue decoration as well so i have taken those two fields okay and i have said yes to both of them because i want customers who have booked both of these uh, anything else to be done there is no other criteria to be done there is no more sorting to be done so let's create a query so i'm going to come to the query design tab and i'm going to click on run so there you go, the query has been created and these are the results, okay? So how are we supposed to save it? We are supposed to save the query as services underscore query. So let's click on save and let's type here services underscore query. And we say, okay, so the query has been saved as well. The next thing is take a screenshot of the query design and paste the screenshot into document task A2. Take a screenshot of the query design. So let's change the view. Let's go into design view. And let's take a screenshot of this. Okay. And let's paste this screenshot in document task A2. Okay, here you go. We have pasted it. And the next thing to be done. Okay, the next thing to be done, it says is resave task A2. Okay, resave task A2. So let's click on save and save it again. Right. Then it goes on to say, Brogan wants to produce a database report. So now we're talking about producing a report based on the results from the services query. So we are supposed to create a, a report based on the results that we got from the services query, based on these results, okay? Based on these results, we are supposed to create a report, okay? So over here, they say the report must have so many things. Let us first get the report created, okay? Let's come into create. And let's come into report. Now, before you do click on report, make sure you are on the correct query. You're on the services query. Okay, then come and click on report. So now the computer creates the report for you. Okay, now there are some changes that you're supposed to make. Okay, and those changes, you can either make it in layout view or you can make it in design view. So layout view allows you to make basic formatting changes. Advanced changes, you will have to go into design view. Okay. So let's see what are the changes. The first change that they have spoken about is it should have a suitable title using a serif font. Serif font meaning a font that has uh, pointy edges. Okay. So a suitable title. Remember that this report is based on services query. Services query was about customers. What was it about? It was customers who had booked certain services and who are, what, are, what were those services? Catering and venue decoration, right? So let's put that as our title. Let's simply say, customers let's remove this and let's say customers who booked the 
uh, what was it? Who book the catering and venue decoration services? Who book the catering and venue decoration services? Okay, so this is going to be my title. Okay, uh, the next thing it says is. Uh, so we have a suitable title. It is in a serif font. You can see it's having pointy edges. Okay. Include the logo you created in task A1B in the top left of the report. In the top left. So for this, I'm going to go into design view. For this, I'm going to go into design view. And it's supposed to be in the top left. Okay. So somewhere over here. I'm going to make it somewhere over here. Sorry. Top left is over here. Okay. So I'm not going to use insert logo. I'm not going to use the logo option. I'm going to use the insert image option. The reason I'm not using logo is because when you use the logo option, the entire logo doesn't appear. Just a small part of the logo only appears. So instead, I'm going to use insert image so that the whole logo is going to appear. Now, guys, before you insert the logo, ensure that you have not clicked on any part of your uh, uh, report. Because say, for example, if you have clicked on something, can you see? insert image as soon as you click on it it's going to appear in this location okay or for example if you have clicked on a field insert image will not work okay so make sure you have clicked on outside of the report okay somewhere over here click outside the report now insert image works okay so now you come to insert image and you come to browse okay and locate where you have kept your image so where have you kept your image for me it's on the desktop it's inside 2022 practical paper and this is my logo and I say, okay. So my computer has now, the cursor has changed into for me to draw where I want my logo to appear. So I simply come and draw it over here. This is where I want my logo to appear, top left corner. Okay, as you can see now the entire logo is visible, okay? All right, the next thing to be done is show only the required fields. So in the query, they told us only customer ID, party type, party date. Make sure you only have those fields. Do not add anything else. Okay. The next thing it says is show the record sorted as required. Okay, so what was the sorting that they told us to do in the query? In the query, they told us it should be in ascending order of party date, right? So just go into layout view. Okay, go into layout view and see, is it in ascending order of party date? It doesn't look like 2025, 2024, 2026. It doesn't look like it's in ascending order. So let's put it into ascending order. Let's click on the data. Okay, let's come into the home tab and let's say sort ascending. Okay, so now this is in ascending order. You can see all the 24s and the 25s and the 26s. Okay, superb. The next thing it says is include the company name, the perfect party in the header. Okay, so if you go into design view again, guys, if you go into design view, you can see there are two headers. You have the uh, report header, which is this area, and you also have the page header. They did not tell us which header, so I'm going to stick to the report header. So I'm going to increase the space of the report header. I have increased the space, and I'm going to take a label, okay, the third tool in report design, the third tool, and I'm going to draw it from here to here, and the name is going to be the perfect party, okay? They haven't told me whether it should be bold, italic, underline, all that has not been told. Okay, enter your name, candidate number, and center number in the page footer. So over here, they have specifically told me page footer. Okay, so let's, uh, one second. Okay. So page footer area is also not big enough. Let's increase it. Let's pull it down. So now we have enough space for the page footer. Let me come to report design. Let's come to label, and let's draw the label over here. So over here, you're supposed to type your name, candidate number, and your center number. Your name, your candidate number, and your center number. Okay. So with that, you have come to the end of your report. You can go into, did I make a mistake? Let's do it again. Let's take a label. Let's draw it over here. Your name, your candidate number, and your center number. Okay, let's go into report view and see how it looks. It looks quite fine. You can see your perfect party is there in the header. Your footer is also there. Okay, it's sorted in ascending order as well. Okay, all looks good. So with that, you have come to the end of the database report question. So it says take a screenshot of the report, paste a screenshot into document task A2. So let's take a screenshot of this. and paste it to document task A2. Okay, that's also done. The next thing it says is, uh, it says over here, 
Brogan wants to add an additional field to the customer table to include the customer contact number. Okay, so customer ID, customer name, customer contact number, email address, preferred contact method. So he wants to add this new field, customer contact number. Okay. Answer these questions in document task A2. Give the most appropriate data type Brogan should use for the customer contact number field. So let's put this question number down first. Let's zoom in. Task A to B. Okay. So the first question, okay, they're asking a suitable data type for customer contact number. So normally everybody would say, well, it's a contact number. So the data type should be number, but that's not the best. Okay. Because if you set the data type to number, the contact number cannot begin with zero. Because when you start with a zero, the computer will automatically omit it because zero, seven and seven is the same thing for the computer. So the computer will simply get rid of the zero at the beginning. So that's problem number one. If you set the data type to number, so it would be better for you to set it to text. When you set it to text, if you put a zero at the beginning, the computer is not going to touch it. Okay. The second reason is certain contact numbers, you have the plus symbol in front of plus nine, four, plus nine, six, plus one, zero, one. Isn't it? So if your data type for the contact number is number, you will not be able to put this plus symbol in front. Okay. So two reasons. You can just put one of those reasons. Okay. I mean, they haven't asked for a reason, right? They have only asked you to, to tell the most appropriate data type. Okay. So I just explained to you the reasoning behind selecting text, uh, but you don't need to write it in your answer. You can simply say text. Okay. The data type is going to be text. Then it says, give the most appropriate field size Brogan should use for the customer contact number. So now, for example, over here in Sri Lanka, all telephone numbers are 10 digits. So over here, the field size should be 10. But I do not know where you are watching it from. So whatever country you are watching it from, in your country, how many digits is a telephone number? That value will be the field size. Okay, so I'm going to put 10 over here, 10 digits. Okay, the next one. Identify which field would be used as a foreign key in the party table. So all of you all know what a primary key is, right? The field which has unique data and is used to identify records in a table will be the primary key field. Okay. Now, a primary key from another table is known as a foreign key. Okay. So, uh, so if you connect the customer table and the party table together, in order to connect the two tables, there has to be a common field. Okay, so when you connect the party table with the customer table, you're going to use the customer ID. Okay, so the customer ID from the customer table is going to be used to link it to the party table. Okay, so then automatically customer ID becomes a foreign key because it's a primary key from one table that is being connected to another table. So it becomes the foreign key. Okay, so you can say customer ID. Is there anything else? Resave task A2. So let's resave it. Uh, add a record to the customer table that stores these customer details. Okay, so we are supposed to add these details to the customer table. No problems. Let's go to the customer table. Let's double click over here. So the customer ID is, what's the customer ID? It's SA1203. SA1203. The customer name is Samuels. The email address is samuels at fortran nine. And preferred contact method is going to be email. Okay, so as you can see, there is a drop down list. If you remember, I, I told you there's a lookup. You can only choose one of them. So we have selected email and we are done. We press enter. Okay. Then it says resave the customer table. So let's resave it. Let's click on save. Take a screenshot of the customer's table in data sheet view, showing the new record, paste a screenshot. Okay, let's take a screenshot. Windows Shift S. And let's come into Microsoft Word and paste it. There you go, we have pasted it. Now, the next thing it says is, uh, answer these questions in the document task A2. So let's put the heading task A2E now. Task A to E, right. The first question says the party table includes the date field. 
Okay, state one appropriate validation check that could be used on the date field. So let's come to our table and let's look at the party table. And if you look at the party tables date field, look at this, I hope you guys can see it. What can you notice? What kind of a rule can you put for the party date field? If you look very carefully, you can see all the bookings are from 2024 onwards. There is no booking before 2024. If you look carefully, you can see all the bookings are from 2024 onwards. So you can have a validation rule for the party date field saying accept values only from 2024 onwards. Okay, so you can basically put a validation rule like this. You can say, let's put the question number. You can have a validation rule that says greater than, which basically means after then, star star, or you can say one slash one, first January slash 2024. Is it clear? So you're basically telling your computer when it comes to party date, accept from 2024 onwards only. Do not accept anything before that. Okay. You can put a rule like that. Okay. As you can see, greater than, greater than means after 1-1-2024. Okay. The next question says, the customer table includes the preferred contact method field, which is this field. And explain one reason why the field uses limit to list on the lookup list. I hope you guys remember at the beginning, I told you all, if you all look over here, the preferred contact method is using a lookup list. And in the lookup list, the values that are there are mobile and email. Okay, the user has to choose mobile or email. The, the person who created this database has put one more rule. What is that rule he has put? He has also said, uh, where is it? He has also said limit to list. Limit to list means the user can only select values from the lookup list. They cannot put their own values. You get it? So they have to either select email or mobile. They cannot put any other value. That's what limit to list means. From the list that is given, limit it to that. The user can only select values from that list. They cannot put any other values. So over here, they're asking one reason why this limit to list has been used. Yes, you have got the answer. Exactly. One reason why it's being used is you can simply say, in order to prevent the user from entering their own values. Okay, if you allow the users to put their own values, what happens? Which can lead to inconsistent data being entered into the table. Okay, so if you allow users to enter their own values, it's going to learn, it's going to lead into a lot of inconsistent values. So one will put mobile, one will put phone, one will put telephone, one will put land phone. One might put mobile phone. Okay, so for one value, you're having so many different values. It leads to inconsistency. So this is why the, you, the person who created the database has said limit to list. Get the user to select only one of these values and do not allow them to put any other values. Okay, so I hope it makes sense. Okay, I hope you have understood. If you don't, you can drop a comment. You can get in touch with us. Uh, the WhatsApp number is there. The email is there. Okay, in the description of the video. Okay, do get in touch if necessary. And uh, yeah, with that, we have then come to the end of the database question is also over right now. Okay, so yeah, that's it. So resave task A2, save task A2 as a PDF. Let's quickly do that. Save, I hope you remember the shortcut key F12. Okay, I told you F12 is a shortcut key for save as, and over here you can select save as type as PDF. So you click on save. And if you go into your folder, you can see you have task A2 in PDF format as well. Okay, so next we will be moving into web authoring where we will have to be, where we will be creating a web page. Okay, uh, so see you in the next video.